Uh, welcome everyone to tonight's council meeting and apologies for the slight delay. Um, in all things technical, sometimes they uh, don't perform the way you hoped. So problems are resolved and look forward to uh, that being the case throughout the rest of the meeting. My name is Councillor Cynthia Watson and I'm the Mayor of Burundara. It is now my privilege to read the Council Prayer. Almighty God, we humbly seek your blessings upon this Council. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of the city of Burundara. Amen. The city of Burundara acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land and respects their customs and traditions. The health and safety and well-being of the community has and will always be the paramount consideration of the council. Council continues to be guided by government directives and wants to be able to do the right thing for the health of our community during the COVID-19 pandemic. The COVID-19 Omnibus Emergency Measures Act 2020, passed by the Victorian Parliament on the 23rd of April 2020, included changes to the Local Government Act 2020, which affected the conduct of council meetings. The change became, became effective on the 1st of May 2020. Council is now able to hold virtual meetings and councillors can participate in meetings remotely by electronic means of communication. This has necessitated changes to the existing operation of the council meeting. The council meeting is being live streamed on council website, so you will be able to view the proceedings of this meeting, council deliberations and the voting. The meeting is also being recorded and will be made available on the council website as soon as practical after the meeting. Should technical problems be encountered by the council, then the meeting will be adjourned until resolution or postponed. I'll start by introducing my fellow councillors and officers who are present for this meeting. And councillors, as I introduce you, if you would please uh, indicate that you are present. Councillor Jack Wegman. Uh, present. Councillor Felicity Sinfield. Councillor Sinfield. Present, thank you. Councillor Addis. I'm present, thank you, Mayor. Councillor Hollingsworth. Present. Uh, Councillor Hollingsworth, we couldn't hear you. Thank you. Councillor Park. Present. Councillor Heard. Omnipre omnipresent. <laughs> Good to know. Councillor Healy. Present. Present. Uh, thank you, Councillor Healy. And Councillor Thompson. Present. Uh, thank you, councillors. Um, before we go on, I um, just want to alert Councillor Park that, oh, I beg your pardon, Councillor Ross. Thank you. Um, Councillor Park, your microphone is very faint, so if you could uh, just speak up a little when you, when you want to uh, make your views known, that would be appreciated. I think you'll find it's not the microphone, but rather... Uh, the we didn't I hear was, any of that. I was muted before. People, whoever's got control of the mute needs to speed up and get in sync with what we're doing and then there won't be a problem. All right, thank you, Council Park. Um, we have a number of Council officers who are participating in the meeting tonight. Our Chief Executive Officer, Philip Storer, the Director of City Planning, Sharan Wickram Singer, Director of Community and Development, Caroline McLean, the Director of Environment and Infrastructure, Daniel Freer. Director, Customer Experience and Business Transformation, Bruce Dobson. Executive Manager, People, Culture and Development, Carolyn Terry. Manager of Governance, David Thompson. Governor Projects Officer, Elizabeth Manu. There are also a number of officers in attendance tonight and they will be introduced as they present their reports. I'll now move on to the order of business as listed on our papers. And we'll begin with apologies. Mr Thompson, are there any apologies for this evening? Through you, Madam Mayor, there are no apologies for this evening. 
Thank you very much. Um, item one for this evening, councillors, is the adoption and confirmation of the minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on the 24th of February 2020. Special council meeting held on the 5th of March 2020. A special council meeting held on the 4th of May 2020. And the special council meetings held on the 23rd of March 2020. Councillors, can I please have a motion to adopt and confirm the minutes? Uh, Councillor Hurd. As printed, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And Councillor Hollingsworth? Happy to second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor, is there anyone opposed to this motion? There being no opposition, I declare the motion carried. Uh, second order of business is the declaration of conflict of interest of any councillor or council officer. Uh, this evening, uh, there, uh, I will be declaring a, con a conflict of interest, and I would now ask that is, is there anyone else who also needs to declare a conflict. Uh, there being none, I'll then proceed with my declaration and I'll be declaring a conflict of interest under section 77B. I have a direct interest in accordance with the Local Government Act 1989, uh, item 7.2, which is concerning the council's membership of the Victorian Local Governance Association. I am a board member of the VLGA and I therefore have a direct interest. So I will therefore exit the meeting this evening. Thank you. Uh, my apologies, Councillor. I uh, made my declaration and my exit is, is not that imminent. Um, I will uh, do that. I will accept the meeting when the moment arises when we reach that item on the agenda. Item three: uh, deputations and presentations, petitions, and public submissions. Uh, councillors, we have a deputation this evening from Dr. Fiona Bruce and Ms. Alice Caldwell, and so I would like to welcome you to the council meeting this evening. Um, you have joined us as representatives of the Kuyong Climate Change Alliance. And I acknowledge Council has received your petition, which will be tabled later in the meeting. The purpose of your deputation, as I understand it, is to provide a context to the petition and speak in support of the petition. Please note, in accordance with Council's meeting procedure local law, you have a maximum of six minutes to make your deputation. At the conclusion of your uh, deputation, we may ask questions of clarification. Um, so, um, Dr. Bruce and Ms. Caldwell, are you uh, ready to, to speak? Um, who will yep. be speaking first? I'll be speaking first. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Bruce. If you'd like to commence your presentation uh, now, thank you very much. Okay. Good evening. My name is Fiona Bruce. I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners of this area and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I'm a dermatologist. I work at the Austin and Mercy Hospitals and in private practice in Bandura, and I've lived in Burundara for more than 25 years. The science is crystal clear. We are in a climate emergency. This is a great threat to public health from such issues as heat stress, increased incidence of infectious, infectious diseases, food insecurity and mental ill health and respiratory problems from increased bushfires. It's an emergency because we are close to planetary tipping points which threaten rapid and irreversible change. The world is on track for devastating climate disruption from which no one can self-isolate. Medical groups including the AMA, the Royal Australian College of Physicians and Australasian College of Emergency Medicine have declared climate change a health emergency. Between October 2019 and March 2020, a number of groups in Burundara joined together and asked the community to sign a petition to council asking that it declare a climate emergency. That petition with 3,913 in-person signatures will be tabled at this meeting. As of May the 13th, over 1,300 jurisdictions in 30 countries have declared a climate emergency. 
This includes the cities of Sydney and Melbourne and Stonington, Manningham and Banyul councils. Stonington is developing a climate emergency action plan at the moment. Manningham has got youth climate leaders. Scientists are telling us again and again that we are close to running out of time. There's no one coming to save us. The problem isn't going away. The time for action is now and it can't wait. Now, we've got different opportunities to act. The people of Burundara can sign a petition. Now, I can speak to you, but you are the only ones who have got this particular opportunity to act and make a difference. To declare a climate emergency is a very meaningful act of leadership that will lead to a better future for us all. I ask you to put human health first and declare a climate emergency. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Caldwell, would you like to um, uh, make your presentation? Thank you. Good evening, councillors. My name is Alice Caldwell, and it is with great honour that today I'm co presenting this deputation regarding a climate emergency declaration. I'm 17 years old, I'm a current Year 12 student and I attend a local school in Kew, of which I have the privilege of being the head prefect. I was not a born and bred climate activist, I actually only first learnt about climate change roughly four years ago. Between now and then, I frequently oscillated between feelings of despair, apathy, anger, but most prominently, powerlessness. I must admit I am somewhat envious of you all. You as counsellors and adults have a capacity to enact change that I quite frankly don't have. Indeed that young people more broadly don't have. Young people like myself are particularly reliant on or alternatively vulnerable to their governmental representatives. For me, a climate emergency declaration sends a clear, galvanising message to young people that yes, your representatives care. Yes, they speak and acknowledge and act on truth. Yes, they are fighting for your future. When I cast my thoughts to what lies ahead, I see my future full of love, family and friends. I would love to work in development or international relations and have children of my own one day. But unfortunately, hanging over this gilded vision of a future that I have for myself is a cloud, or more aptly, a storm of uncertainty. Will I have clean air to breathe and clean water to drink? Will I have a safe and equitable nation in which to live? What sacrifices will I have to make for the inertia of my predecessors? These are all questions that plague my mind, and I know I'm not alone in this. 150,000 Melbourne youths went on strike last year to express their anguish and frustration, themselves composing a comparatively small constituency of the 7 million strong global movement. I implore you, councillors, to think now of your own children, nieces, nephews. You are the custodians of our future. I trust that you will bear this responsibility with compassion, bravery and strength. My generation has no choice but to trust you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Ms Caldwell. Uh, councillors, are there any uh, questions or clarifications that you would like uh, at this point before Ms Caldwell and Dr Bruce retire from the meeting? Uh, there being none, um, I would like to thank uh, Ms Caldwell and also Dr Bruce for making the um, deputations on behalf of the Kuyong Climate Action Alliance and uh, now I invite you to retire from the meeting. So thank you very much for coming along tonight. Thanks. Right, okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, our uh, two community members have uh, now retired from the meeting and we will
proceed to item 3.2, which are petitions. Uh, Mr. Thompson. Through you, Madam Mayor, Council, since we've last had a Council meeting, we've received four petitions. The details of the petitions are set out on page four of your business papers. I commend the officer's recommendation to you this evening. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, councillors, uh, is anyone prepared to move a motion at, to receive and note the petitions as printed? Councillor Sinfield? Happy to receive them. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Healy, I believe you put your hand up next. Uh, you are happy to second? Yes, Madam uh, Chair. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone opposed to uh, this particular motion? Uh, there being none, I declare the motion carried. Item four this evening is assemblies of councillors. Uh, councillors, is there anyone prepared to move a motion to receive and note the record of assemblies of councillors as printed on the screen? Uh, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Uh, Councillor Thompson, I beg your pardon. Uh, and thank you, Councillor Hollingsworth. You're prepared to second that motion? Is there anyone opposed to this motion? There being none, I declare the motion carried. Item five on the agenda this evening is public question time. Council encourages the submission of public questions prior to 12 p.m. on the day of the meeting. Questions submitted prior to 12 noon will be provided with a detailed verbal response, as well as a response in writing. Those submitted after 12 p.m. will receive a verbal response, if possible, but will otherwise uh, be taken on notice for a written response to be provided in due course. Mr Thompson, do we have any public questions? Through you, Madam Mayor, we've received two questions for consideration this evening. Thank you, Mr Thompson. So we've received uh, two questions and the copies of these questions have been circulated to all councillors. The questions have each been referred to the relevant director to provide a written response in due course. Okay. Our first question is from Mr Hundley of Orwa North and the subject is the North East Link. Uh, the question is, does Burundara Council continue to be bound by a memorandum of understanding or any other instrument that would restrict the information it provides to the public on the proposed North East Link? If so, please advise of the details. Read this. Um, Mr. Freer, are you, uh, can you please um, address the question that uh, Mr. Hundley has posed to Council this evening? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Council entered into, an, into a memorandum of understanding with the North East Link Authority, as it was known then, in June 2018. The North East Link Authority at that time required all councillors impacted by the North East Link project to enter into an MOU and would not share information about the project until that MOU was executed. This included information on the impact of the project on Burundara land, the road network and our community and more broadly. This agreement remains in place and, contain, and Council continues to adhere to the agreement. Information in the public domain on the project is of course available from the North East Link Project Authority via their website. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr Freer, and uh, I've neglected to uh, inform the community as to why you are answering this question, and it's because you're the Director of Environment and Infrastructure, and we thank you for your response. Uh, the second question is also from um, Mr Hundley, and the subject is the COVID-19 pandemic, proposed council projects for Commonwealth and Victorian government funding. And the question for consideration is, as follows. Uh, please advise the details of any projects, including funding sort, which have been nominated or are proposed to be nominated by the Council for funding by either the Commonwealth or Victorian Government in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this question relates to a matter which is on the agenda this evening and is therefore allowed in accordance with Clause 60.2.1 of the Meeting Procedure Local Law. 
Further, the questions have been previously put in writing to a councillor and received a written response from the councillor and is therefore allowed in accordance with our meeting procedure local law. Call upon the Director of Customer Experience and Business Transformation to respond to the question from Mr Hundley. Uh, Mr Johnson, are you able to um, address the question at hand? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council is in the process of con considering opportunities for such government funding from the Commonwealth and state governments. Once that list of projects has been finalised, we'll be able to provide Mr Hundley with a written response uh, and also update our community through our normal communication channels. Thank you. Uh, thank you Mr. very much, Mr Dobson. And just to let uh, you all know that uh, Mr Hundley will receive a written uh, response in due course. Uh, we'll now move on to item six on the agenda this evening, uh, notices of motion. Mr Thompson, do we have any notices of motion this evening? Through you, Madam Mayor, we've received two notices of motion and they're set out in your business papers for this evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Thompson. Um, are we putting this up on the screen? All right, uh, the motion's about to go up on the screen. Uh, is there any way we can shrink that down? All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Thompson. Just working our way through some of the, the uh, technical nuances of uh, the equipment here tonight. Um, and that we've received a notice of motion from Councillor Addis, and I'd now like to ask her to present uh, motion number 50, which is currently on the screen in front of us. Thank you, Councillor Addis. Oh, uh, thank your pardon. Um, we need a seconder. Uh, Councillor Ross. Happy to second. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Addis, if you'd like to speak to your motion. Um, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, the reason why I have to put up this motion is that I believe that as councillors um, we have the privilege of leadership and with that privilege comes an obligation to make decisions on behalf of our community and that these decisions reflect their views. And another obligation we have as councillors is to listen and carefully consider expert evidence when we do make these decisions. Um, the expert evidence is readily available and um, has been summarised earlier this evening, but if I could just um, mention a couple of salient points. I think it's fairly clear that time is running out for us to avert the worst impacts of climate disruption. Um, there's been a paper published by 11,000 scientists and in that they declared clearly and unequivocally that the planet Earth is facing a climate emergency. We know the climate is changing, it is getting hotter and this is happening rapidly so. Greenhouse gases are also rising. It's, it's been estimated that a climate tipping point may occur at a two degree rise and on current trends this is predicted. To limit heating to 1.5 degrees, Reductions will need to be in the order of five times greater than the current national targets under the Paris Agreement. We know that three quarters of Australians agree that we are facing a climate change emergency and that we should take action. Now in my view, whether we talk about climate, weather, bushfires, droughts and floods or the environment, and whether we talk about an emergency, a disaster or a pandemic, we all know that we are describing an indisputable and dangerous change and that it is critical that we take urgent action. 
The danger and urgency of the situation comes from a standing on a cliff face of a tipping point, a cascade of events that um, can be too late to prevent. And should this happen, the world will be uninhabitable for many and many animals and plants will die. I'd like to paraphrase the words of Christiana Figueres, one of the UN's top climate um, um, negotiators. And the words were essentially, I am deeply pained by the attitude of the current Australian government that after the disaster of bushfires in Australia is still denying climate change and denying the fact that there is a lot that Australia can and should be doing. The aim should be for all of us, all levels of government, to cooperate to address this problem. And this should include local communities and their elected representatives. Um, in seeking to take this position on behalf of our community, I rely upon the information we have that our community values the environment. This is consequently a theme in our community plan, a recognition of our understanding they value the environment. We also know that they want us to do more to protect the environment. And it was this understanding that underpinned our endorsement of the new FOGO waste system. So my aim here is to take a leadership position and to act on behalf of our community who have told us that they value the environment and want us to do more. And to declare a climate emergency would seem to be consistent with this position. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Addis. Um, would anyone else uh, like to speak to the motion? And uh, I'm also in search of uh, uh, also uh, wanting to know if uh, anyone is opposed to this particular motion. We have uh, a number of uh, councillors who are opposed. Would anyone like to speak to the motion? Uh, Councillor Ross. As a seconder, I would like to speak. Um, if you'd take the floor. Thank you. Today is the first day of the Royal Commission into the bushfires, which devastated parts of Victoria and New South Wales over the summer, now known as Black Summer. If not for the current pandemic, the bushfires would have been the seminal moment of 2020. Australia is regarded by the rest of the world as the canary in the mine. We are showing the effects of climate change and demonstrating that the world is in a climate emergency. I'd like to share a quote. We are currently in a state of climate emergency. This summer we've seen devastation across the country through bushfires, floods and unprecedented weather events. 2019 was the hottest and driest year recorded in Australia, with 2010 to 2019 the hottest decade recorded worldwide. At a local level, we've seen climate-driven extreme weather events that have had a significant impact on our environment, the local economy and human health, such as major storms, poor air quality and contaminated rain. Our climate is changing and our community deserves an imminent and urgent response. That was Councillor Steve Stephanopoulos, Mayor of the City of Stonington, after Stonington declared a climate emergency in February. He added, some people say this isn't the role of local government, but it absolutely is. Everything starts at a local level and we'll look to work with our partners at the state and federal levels. To date, 1,496 municipalities in 30 countries have declared climate emergency. In the United Kingdom, those municipalities cover 90% of the population, and in New Zealand, 75% of the population. 32 councils in Victoria have declared climate emergencies, including every council in our regional grouping. Bayside declared an emergency in December. Kingston in January, Stonington in February, and Glenira on May the 5th. Councils that have declared a climate emergency recognise that climate change is causing significant damage to our economy, society and environment, and that urgent action is required to reverse current trends 
and to secure our planet for future generations. One of the things that has been disappointing is that for some reason climate has been politicised. But I'm glad to see that that has not happened in our neighbouring councils. Orbar Stonington made their declarations following a notice of motion. But at Stonington, they have regular six-month reports on climate change and sustainability, and it was declared at one of those after one of those reports. The motion at Bayside was passed unanimously. Just one councillor voted against it at Glenara, and just one councillor voted against it at Stonington. To give Stonington as an, as an example, those councillors who were members of the Liberal and Labour parties all voted for it. It was an independent proposed. A declaration demonstrates council's leadership role as an environmental steward and a commitment to address climate change in partnership with the, with the community. The new Local Government Act has an overarching principle to include mitigation and planning for climate change risks. Not addressing climate change risks has emerging legal implications for councils. Declaring a climate emergency is important. Council has a responsibility to ensure resilience, health and well-being of the community. With vulnerable ageing and young community members experiencing high risks from climate change, this poses a serious threat to our community. Council plays an important leadership role in Burundara. A key role of council is supporting and encouraging residents, businesses, schools and community groups to reduce their admissions and adapt to the impacts of climate change. We also have a role as stewards and custodians, which, which I do take this role very seriously, as I'm sure all councillors do. This declaration is an opportunity for council to reaffirm its strong leadership position. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Um, Councillors, is there anyone else wishing to speak to the motion? Councillor Healy. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I thank the previous speakers. Um, I think the concept of leadership uh, can be determined in many ways, and it's been used uh, in the presentations to us, meetings to us in the, in the previous two presentations. But I think it's leadership to jump in and make a decision on behalf of 179,000 286 Burundara residents who are very capable of uh, telling us what they would like us to do. So if I go back to notice of motion 49 in December, our approach was to develop a community consultation along the lines of the Burundara Community Plan. This provided every resident in the city of Burundara with an opportunity to come on a conversation about how we could uh, change patterns. Um, it provides an opportunity for everyone to be involved. Right now, if we are to declare a climate change emergency this evening, it usurps the opportunity of those 179,286 Burundara residents to be involved and have their say. My view is that our community is uh, in mature and knows the environment very well. And having decided to go on a community consultation exercise, which has been delayed by COVID, we find ourselves in a position where we can not only uh, arrive at a, an outcome with the community, uh, having had a, a really good discussion on this, we might actually change the way people uh, carry out their own climate responses in their own homes. We need to have a conversation at every kitchen table. Time and again, people come to government asking government to make the decision. The decision can happen in each household. And the discussion around the kitchen table about how each of us are going to change the way we do things, be that switching off a iPad phone charger or iPhone charger or any one of those chargers that we have in our house. How as a family could we reduce our carbon footprint? We all had a discussion. 
So going on a con consultation with the community, which starts with a blank page, which says, what does the Burundara Climate Action Plan look like? Provides a wonderful opportunity for people to be engaged, for the community to find hopefully a consensus. And if out of that, the community says that we need to have a climate emergency declaration, then that's a real powerful mechanism for the community to do. And it's one that the council should respond to and each councillor on the day would respond to it. So I think the notice of motion should not be supported this evening. And I think the second one should also not be supported because it simply removes the opportunity for our community to become engaged in a conversation in the home and in the community to change the way we live because it sounds to me that we need to change. So I don't dispute uh, any of the material that was put forward before other than I think the leadership opportunity here is to actually have that conversation with the community and then respond as a result of the informed position that the community finds its way to. That is how the community plan works and I think it's a very good mechanism for the way that this can work. We have um, committed to, in notice of Notion 49, to redoing the Burundara Low Carbon Future Strategy, which we put together in 2009, 2000, which has survived till now, and we're going to call it the Climate Action Plan. I would rather have the community come on that plan. I would rather have of the 183,199 as of today's statistics residents, as many of them engaged in the conversation and not deprive from them or remove from them their right of free speech, their right to engage and really their social justice of the opportunity to be in that room for those conversations. Now many of them probably won't engage but those who want to, I believe, have a right and I don't want to remove that right. I've probably said enough. I won't be supporting this motion, notice of motion number 50. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Healy. Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor, and um, thank you, Ms Cordwell and Dr Bruce, also for your deputation. And the deputation obviously is to declare climate emergency and also mobilise all the re required resources to take that effective action. Um, the petition councillors obviously has got 3,900 signatures collected across Burundara. Um, I know some councillors have had numerous phone calls with residents and even attended some meetings. Other than a, a meeting earlier in March for me, I've only received one email and that was today from a, a Glen Iris resident and no telephone calls. Um, I would actually even not even be surprised if a division is called on this this evening. Um, I must think it's an election year for chance. Ironically, um, I find myself actually agreeing with uh, large parts of this deputation. So let's take away the politics for the moment and look at the science. The scientific data collected and analysed on our modern climate is undeniable. Both natural and anthropogenic causes are recognisable and again, as what's previously stated by the mover, widely published. I, like many residents in Burundara, recognise that there is a moral responsibility to act. Over the years ahead, a very intrinsic part of the climate change will be that that affects the lives of uh, the Burundara residents. Is actually how we manage that effect on our parks, our gardens, waterways, our street streets, our buildings and our services. For us here in Burundara, I actually believe adaption is the key. Uh, the Burundara Climate Action Plan, as Council Head is about, if the community seeks, can take its cues from the fundamental principles of the Victorian Climate Change Act, including establishing long-term emissions reduction targets, setting interim targets to ensure that those long-term targets are actually met, Introducing new policy objectives and principles to embed climate resilience and adaption in Burundara's decision making. Develop per chance a climate action change strategy and an action or adaption action plan. 
Um, we can develop council systems and initiatives. Um, we can also establish a system of periodic reporting, which will provide transparency, accountability, and ensure that the community remains focused and in, informed. Um, this is the idea of what climate action might look like for Burundara. And it can all be led through the consultation with the scale and the urgency needed to address the issues we are facing. It can be carefully constructed to ensure that we're addressing the right areas of council's core activities, both environmentally and economically. On to the motion to declare a climate emergency. If the Burundara community really wants council to declare a climate emergency, let's ask them that question. Let us ask them, is this what they want of their council? Let us ask them what it should look like as we actually consult on the climate action plan. To declare a climate emergency without firstly consulting the community, as Councillor Hearn said, and I've got 175, there's obviously an extra 4,000 residents in the community, we're denying them their voice, their right to knowledge, and what it actually looks like and how it might affect them. I acknowledge the request of the over 3,900 signatories to the petition. This is a very strong show of hands. And it's now up to our leadership on this proposition that's been put forward to us to actually ask this very valid question of the community. So my vote, uh, based on the discussions around leadership, is to actually give my community a voice. I've only had one email today, that's it. The community can, community can tell us what they want and how they want us to declare anything through the consultation on the Burundara Action Plan, Climate Action Plan. To be in step with the community expectations, we need to raise the question and receive feedback. That will go, guide our decision making. So, unfortunately, I cannot support this declaration ahead of any consultation. It's not how we do business here in Burundara. It's not how we've done any of our consultations processes for any things that we've made decisions on. So consultation first and out of that will come whatever it comes. So I want to hear from the community and see how uh, the council uh, asks that important questions. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Councillor Hollingsworth. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Madam Chair. Um, look, I would like to speak in support of uh, Councillor Addis's notice of motion. Uh, I've acknowledged every comment that I've heard this evening from my fellow colleagues um, and look there's merit obviously in everything that's been discussed. I believe that we actually have conducted a very comprehensive community consultation. When we were first elected um, within a month of um, the, the council elections we embarked on a very extensive community consultation plan, a plan that was designed to last from uh, 2017 up to 2027. In that plan we put to our community what were the key issues of importance to them, what do we as councillors need to do to shape the future of Burundara. In the community plan the top three matters of concern to our community are clearly stated in our community plan. Number three is the environment and I'll just read out one section of that that's in, in the plan. Strategy 3.7 Lead our community through advocacy and action to mitigate against and adapt to impacts of climate change, to minimise adverse impacts on community health and wellbeing, our natural environment, and facilities and services. This is a very comprehensive document, um, a very comprehensive plan. It was the largest plan Burundara has ever embarked on. Now at the time, I agree, we weren't specifically using the language of climate change, climate emergency. But since then a lot has developed. In recent time, in December last year, where we supported to um, acknowledge the, the, the importance of a climate action plan, so much has changed since that period of time. Conditions have escalated, climate issues, um, whether it be natural events through um, weather conditions or whether through viral, i.e. COVID. Um, we are now having the conversations that Councillor Healy talked about sitting around the table with your family. That's what we've been doing for the last two or three months. We are now aware that we are so vulnerable in so many ways, whether it be through pandemic, through storm, cyclone, tsunami, 
uh, severe weather patterns, drought, fire, it's escalating at a rapid rate and it's something that I believe um, is now a, a matter that we have to be more concerned about and move faster on decision making process of how we as a local government can support our community and beyond our local community. I believe that councillors are at the coalface of the community. Uh, we are the first contact. We have a personalised relationship with them. We know our community groups, we know our people, we communicate with a, a large group of bodies. In, uh, just today I have received an email from Siena College, which is in the Lyndon Ward that I represent, and they were delighted to hear that this is uh, an agenda item that's being put forward tonight. They've actually sent a very detailed letter, and I won't read it out in its entirety, but I'll just read out a few paragraphs. And they talk about a community of 805 students with 120 staff. They support the motion that's being put forward tonight that we're talking about now. They mention a sense of urgency and they would um, be grateful if Burundara would show leadership in the impacts of climate change and uh, drive and support with the state and federal governments to encourage um, government at all levels to be involved with this. They're already doing a numerous amount of um, initiatives in, in their own school environment, in their own home environment to help support climate change. Um, other school community groups, other resident groups. Um, I had correspondence also today from the Canterbury Community Action Group um, because the Lyndon Ward obviously encompasses part of Canterbury. They have sent a letter of support as well and they are thanking Council for bringing this to the uh, agenda this evening. In closing, I just wanted to say that, uh, ironically, on Friday, I was listening to a media um, interview, and it was um, Anthony Albanese, Leader of Opposition. But the question put to him was um, his thoughts on the Morrison government's initiative to provide grant funding to local governments to support uh, shovel-ready projects, which was a wonderful welcoming report and news release to local government. Um, during that conversation, he talked about the need for obviously infrastructure renewal and he then referred to uh, climate change and bushfire relief. And in his own words, and I've tried to write it down verbatim, he talked about acknowledgement of bushfires is climate change related. Government has considered that climate change contributing or is a contributing factor to our weather conditions and renewable um, forms of energy are critical. We do need to take action. On the 16th of March this year, our state government had declared a state of emergency. Now, I know we're using the word emergency tonight, and whether it be climate change emergency, whether it be climate plan action, the message is the same. We need to be seen as doing something now. We need to start at local government level. We need to lead by example. We need to say to our state and federal representatives that we are listening to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsworth. Councillor Hurd, I believe you had your hand up. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, when I saw that motion, and I, I don't think many of the people watching this meeting tonight would be aware about the circumstances under which we first found out about it, in good faith, last December, I uh, happy to agree to have to a climate action plan. I'd be happy to agree to many aspects of the motions we have tonight. The only problem was they only showed us the motion on Friday afternoon. So they gave us no time to talk to officers about how we can implement these things, what budget ramifications there may be, um, and all sorts of other issues. Apologies for the phone. Therefore, I was really annoyed because I saw aspects of these motions that I could support. I might not have used the word state of emergency for legal reasons, but I would certainly be used as a mat word such as a matter of urgency that we are about to reach a tipping point. And I'm certainly committed to lowering emissions targets and um, hopefully having zero targets well before 2050. And the people I've spoken to in my ward are well aware of that. In good faith, I told those people that I'd be happy to develop a process with council whereby we can move to something that something the like of which we are talking about. 
And so I, what I do when I want to get a motion through council, as most councillors do, is they talk to their colleagues about it. We hear a petition, we hear submissions, and I thank the people who submitted, submitted to us tonight. We hear those things, and we go back and we talk, and we talk to our communities more. And we evolve a motion, and we evolve a plan, and we push the targets forward. The only reason people put a motion in like that on a Friday afternoon is to try and make themselves look good and the rest of us look bad. But the, the fact of the matter is, if, if you think that that wasn't, a, if the people watching think that that wasn't a political action, well, I've got an opera house to sell you and, a, and a, I'll throw in a harbour bridge for 500 bucks extra because it's a con. This motion is a con. It's great in part and there are some parts I certainly agree with. But we need to do much more than this around climate. And I think our best hope is to have continuing dialogue and try and come up with something that is going to work. And we speak to, we show our colleagues on council some respect and we talk to them about it and we, we interact. Councillor Addis came to us in December and I completely agreed with her and then do agree with her that we need to take leadership in, in climate related activities. Absolutely agree. But I think we can't just do some things in really broadly worded motions like that. It's not the emergency so much part that bothers me. It's some of the other parts of the motions about what officers are directed to do in the middle of a pandemic. We've put enormous pressure on our officers uh, during this pandemic period. And so I was think I said, and I've said to people that I've spoken to, I'm happy to do something, but we've just got to give officers a little bit of time to get over some really significant changes. And that's the main reasons I won't be supporting these motions tonight. But I'm certainly not ruling out. I certainly agree that we are reaching a tipping point, that we need urgent action, that we need to um, develop with our community an understanding of these things. Because the last point I would make, and I've been making this point since 2010, that the biggest problem about climate stuff is that a lot of people still don't understand how it affects them. They don't understand what they can do. It's a matter of, and, and I know people are going to, some people laugh at this, but Julia Gillard was actually right when she wanted to have town hall meetings about climate action to educate the community because that is the biggest challenge. And that's what Councillor Healy uh, pointed out as well, as well as Councillor Thompson. I did think about trying to amend the motions to see if we could come up with something better. But there really wasn't um, the scope to do that and um, a couple of councillors and I had discussions but, but we really can't come up with anything at this stage that's going to to make these work for officers and, and be viable. And as I said, you know, if you think that this wasn't a political stunt, well, I've got an opera house to sell you. So I can't support this motion and I'd like to and it's such a wasted opportunity. So I thank everybody for their presentations. I support where you're going but we need to find a clearer way through this. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hurd. Are there any other councillors who would like to speak this evening? Uh, Councillor Sinfield. Thank you, Chair. Um, I won't be supporting the declaration of a climate emergency this evening as I feel that it is just political grandstanding. You can tell it's an election year, there's no doubt about that. Um, nor am I one for making big speeches and taking up time when we're here to make decisions. Uh, decisions that are in the best interests of our 180,000 residents. Decisions that are in the best interests of our very limited financial resources. I like to take real action and I look for opportunities to take real steps to support our environment. The petition put forward tonight of 3,913 signatures represents 2% of our population here in Burundara. If in fact the 3,913 signatories are Burundara residents. They may or may not be, and I'm not here to debate or dispute that. I will advocate in our community, as I have done for my entire elected period, for responsible environmental sustainability, as Councillor Ross alluded to before. That sort of conversation in our community is very important. Leadership through our own actions our own buildings, our own projects, and as the proverbs say, making sure that our own house is in good order and is tidy, is true leadership, demonstrating true, uh, true leadership in that respect and good decision making. As far as the fires are concerned, I really don't want to uh, 
to open up that can of worms too far, but uh, but perhaps if things like backburning and being responsible in the lead up to this year's fires um, had been permitted, then perhaps some of them may have been more controllable. That's up to the community to debate and to decide. Now, many years ago, uh, about two years ago, I attempted to work towards alternatives to plastic straws in this council chamber. But let me assure the community that I couldn't get support for that. I couldn't get my colleagues who are here debating a climate emergency tonight to support the little step that's really achievable working with our economic development uh, team to work with our cafe and pub owners to take that little step to get rid of plastic straws and look at alternatives. But no, that wasn't enough of a political platform for anyone to jump on board, but it was real and it was actionable. So, you know, you, you think that this isn't a political step, well, let's see. So I disagree uh, with the sentiments earlier that this is the role of local government, it's not. Um, our, our charter is very clear in the Act what we should and shouldn't do and can and can't do. Leadership is, uh, is part of our role and, as I said before, taking those real steps to ensure our house is in good order uh, is the way I'd like to start. Now, Burundara has a long history of being environmentally responsible and sustainable and that was well before my time and I commend the CEO and the previous councils for taking those steps in years gone by. And I've no doubt that Burundara will continue to lead the way in real um, environmental sus sustainability well into the future and well after my career here at Burundara has, has ended. Um, but for the time being, I'm happy to stick to our charter and lead in real action and sound decision making. And I won't be supporting this notice of motion tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sinfield. Uh, Councillor Wegman, you indicated that you would like to speak. Uh, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, after listening to everything, including the uh, submissions, um, if, and, and despite all the comments that have been made subsequently by, by my colleagues, I think we're kind of all in furious agreement in a way. We, we all want a better future. We all want action on climate plan. And I think this argument, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> um, I think what we're dealing with is means uh, uh, rather than ends. And I think that what we should be looking at is, uh, well, in, in essence, sticking to the commitment we made to uh, engage in a path forward to look at the action plan. And we, we all committed to that, and I think we are all committed to that, and it's ongoing. So I don't see a necessity to support either motion tonight, and I've thought about it very carefully. Um, look, in summary, we, we all support uh, a future. I've got grandchildren. I don't want to see a, a, you know, a, a degraded future for them. Um, so in, in the end, let's give the officers the chance that we all committed to uh, not that long ago, and let's see where that takes us, because I think in the end we will end up, uh, if not exactly at the same place, then somewhere very, very similar. And uh, so I would encourage my colleagues uh, not to support the motions tonight, but to continue with the plan that we've all committed to uh, previously. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wegman. Uh, Councillor Park. Thank you, Chair. Um, the, the motion, in my view, is nothing but a cheap political stunt. We um, find ourselves less than five months out from the election, and like myself, the mover of this motion has served on council for over seven years, including 12 months as mayor of the city of Burundara. If there was a, an honest and a true and a fair dinkum desire to, to move a motion like this, there's been ample opportunity. The timing is gobsmacking. Um, and I endorse the, all of the comments by those who've spoken against the motion tonight, and I certainly will be voting against the motion. This isn't the province of local government 
And uh, if we're going to declare a climate emergency this week, what's next week? Are we going to declare war on China? Obviously, we, we're throwing aside uh, the role and the responsibility of local government and going off onto a, a foray into territory that clearly isn't the responsibility of local government. I'm not sure when the Mayor of Stonington suddenly became qualified and uh, worthy of uh, quoting ad infinitum. Um, his background certainly isn't one as a scientist. Nonetheless, the, the, the central point here is that we have shown leadership as a council for many years. We, we have actually walked the walked the walk and uh, done more than simply played games and, and postured. And quite frankly, that's what matters. It's our track record. And this council's track record on the environment is second to none. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Park. Um, Councillor Rattis, um, return to you as mover of the motion. Um, thank you very much, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you more to some than others for the comments of my uh, colleagues, um, but I've certainly listened carefully to um, everything that's been said. I think that what for me what this is about is the inconsistency that I see between the actions Borondara is taking to protect the environment, as many have alluded to, we are doing lots of things um, demonstrating how much we care. But it seems that our language around this commitment is actually weaker than our actions. And in my view, declaring a climate emergency simply brings our, our talk in line with our walk, our actions. And hopefully such a direct, direct declaration would motivate us to continue on this path and hopefully to do more. Um, a number of my colleagues spoke about um, how they believe that this declaration will somehow hinder our community from um, directing the change we see when we go out to consult with them. But, but in a sense, that's a completely different process. This is a, de a declaration. It's not seeking to um, enact any actions. And clearly, they will come out of the consultation. Um, likewise, Councillor Thompson spoke about um, desired actions and how we should be seeking these from our, our, com our community. And yes, we should. And declaring a climate emergency in no way um, stops our community from directing how we will enact any change. Um, and I think further, the motion, I don't see anything in this motion that actually directs officers. Um, it's about a declaration, not about directing people to behave in any way. Again, that will come out of our consultation. Um, a couple of councillors spoke in a way quite disparagingly about this being a political stunt. Um, I can assure them that this isn't political for me. I'm not actually very interested in politics. But it seems quite ironic that if they're saying this is a political stunt, it, it seems to imply that they think there are votes to be gained in this by declaring a climate um, emergency that I am seeking to gain votes. And surely if they believe that, that's consistent with saying the community would support such an action. They seem to be saying that I'm doing this because I believe it will gain me votes. Well, maybe it will, maybe it won't, but this is a moral stance. And I liken this decision that we must make about declaring a climate emergency um, to that which all leaders have had to face with the coronavirus pandemic. And I'm struck by the contrast. Australia's leaders listened carefully to the science and medicos. Um, they believed what they were saying and they acted accordingly. 
and we all clearly understand the consequences of these different leadership styles and what it's meant for the different countries around the world. Um, I argue that in a crisis we need our leaders to act strongly and quickly and to step, set the standards for action. In Australia we've had to make some sacrifices and changes and our leaders have made tough and at times, I guess, unpopular decisions to protect us during this pandemic. And in doing so, they've saved um, many lives. They've stopped many of us from dying. And I believe that likewise declaring a climate emergency in the end will save many people from dying. Leadership in the end is about working for the betterment of current and future generations. And working to protect the environment is surely part of this. I request that we apply the same courageous and responsible leadership decision making all governments have shown in recent times when dealing with the current pandemic threat. As councillors we speak on behalf of our community and our community has spoken to us about what they are seeking. As Councillor Hollingsworth said, we. It was one of the three top themes um, identified by our community when we consulted with them for the um, plan. So supporting a motion to declare a climate emergency for me is an expression of our community's views and it does demonstrate strong and thoughtful leadership. Um, so I commend this motion to my colleagues. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Addis. I'll now put the motion to the vote. Um, all those in favour? Uh, Councillor, uh, I'll just note uh, on my sheet here, so you can a rustling of papers. Uh, so I note that Councillor Ross, Councillor Hollingsworth and Councillor Addis are in favour of the motion. Sorry about that, I'm tangled up in my cords. Uh, all those against? Uh, then that's uh, Councillor Healy, Councillor Hurd, Councillor Park, Councillor Sinfield, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Wigman, and I raise my hand and I am against the motion also. So I declare that motion. Oh, sorry, what am I? Sorry, I declare that motion has failed. I'd like to call for a division, please. Uh, all right. Um, now, Councillor Ross, uh, I have written down the um, uh, the votes. So, uh, would uh, passing those uh, the, this record over to Mr. Thompson suffice? So, no, I'm getting a shake of the head. I think you shake. That, that I is think not acceptable. Manager of governance, it needs to be redone again. Yep. All right. Um, I'll now put that vote motion to the vote for the purpose of a division. All those in favour. That is Councillor Ross, Councillor Addis and Councillor Hollingsworth. All those against? It's uh, Councillor Healy, Councillor Hurd, Councillor Park, Councillor Sinfield, Councillor Thompson and Councillor Wegman and myself, Councillor Watson. I declare the motion has failed. Now, Councillor Thompson, uh, Mr Thompson, have you made a record of that division? Yep. All right. Thank you very much. We'll now proceed on to uh, the second notice of motion for this evening. Mr. Thompson, do you have a? Oh, sorry, over the page. Uh, councillors, we have received a second notice of motion, being notice of motion number fifty-one, uh, again brought to us by Councillor Addis. Uh, Councillor Addis, is this uh, your motion as printed before us? Um, I believe so, having read it in the minutes. Thank you. Um, I can't see it on the screen, but I believe. I'm uh, just checking with governance to see if they're putting it up. Uh, there we go. We've got um, notice of motion number 51 up on the screen. Thank now, you very much. No problem. Uh, I will need to wait for that to be taken down so that I can see the screen of councillors again, so that I can see if we have a seconder for this motion this evening. Is there a seconder for the motion? Councillor Hollingsworth, thank you very much. Um, Councillor Addis, would you like to speak to your motion? Um, 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so, excuse me, Councillor Adams, um, just before you, you speak, um, I'll just seek from my colleagues uh, an expression of whether there is a dissent from this motion this evening. Uh, yes, we have um, some people against this particular motion. Councillor Addis, if you'd like to speak to your motion, please make sure you unmute yourself. There you go. Um, you I go? think we're right. Thank you. Yep. Um, as, made, as was made abundantly clear, my preference was to declare a climate emergency on behalf of the community. Um, and really that was as a marker of the urgency of the crisis. But for me, this motion represents another opportunity to highlight the critical situation we are in. Um, it simply asks that we consult with our community and specifically seek their views on declaring a climate emergency. Um, and I understand that some of my colleagues are not comfortable with the terminology, perhaps not comfortable with the words climate or emergency. But really, in the end, this motion simply seeks to ask our community what they think of the words and whether we should use them. And it, it would seem puzzling to me that that anyone would would oppose saying to the community, look, this is what's being put to us by a sizable number of people, but please tell us what you think. Are these words that matter to you? So really, this is simply about um, seeking the community's views. And it doesn't in any way hinder the community from directing us. It, it asks them their thoughts about a, direct, a declaration, but the major bit of the process will to be, asked, to be about asking them for what they would like to see as actions. Um, so it's just a small bit of it, but it seems like a simple and, and reasonable thing to say to them, you know, what do you think? We want to know your views. So on that basis, um, I commend the motion to my colleagues. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Addis. Is there anyone else seeking to speak to the motion this evening? Councillor Hurd. Um, I'm not seeking to speak for the motion, although it, it's better than the other one, but it's effectively saying we'll have a climate emergency inquiry to see whether there's a, people think there's a climate emergency, which the, the question suggests the answer. In, in law, we call that a leading question. The, look, I don't want to go back to the first motion, but my objections to the second one are similar. I have no problems with, with climate action or even the words climate emergency. I have a problem with the way this has been brought about before council and the very fact that a division was called illustrates the political nature of this. The people who brought this motion knew these motions knew they wouldn't succeed. They knew all along they wouldn't succeed. Um, what you really want to try and do within this council is try and talk to people to, and the community to, to get where we agree, not just throw motions up to effectively try and make your colleagues look like they're less politically correct line than you are. And, and if you're really serious about getting these things through, that's what you do. I've had to do it all my life as a person who is blind to try and gradually bring people around to seeing that blind people are capable. We're not just dependent and useless, that we are capable, viable employees and human beings. You, it, it takes time and it takes strategy to do this. It takes strategic thinking. And I think that's what these motions have lacked. And that's my main objection because we pass them and they go nowhere other than confuse officers and, and confuse um, us about, confuse people about a process that we've already set up. So my objections are, are still valid for these, um, for this particular motion. So I can't support it, I'm afraid. Well, thank you, Councillor Hurd. Now I saw Councillor Healy's hand go up and then Councillor Thompson, I do note that you are following. Councillor Healy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, look, the problems with this motion uh, come in two parts. The first part is, and that notice of motion 49, we already committed to committing to the budgetary process for, um, to, for undertaking a consultation. So this is somewhat repetitive or redundant. Um, if uh, people want to see whether this comes through, well, I suggest probably um, the week after next, we'll probably have the council budget being uh, put on display for adopt, sent out for community consultation. Um, if notice of motion 49 is um, uh, delivered, 
then people will see the line item in the budget. So it's somewhat redundant. Council made its commitment in uh, Notice of Motion 49. I can't see why it wouldn't be delivered. The second part of this is the way that you run consultation. I spoke about it a little bit earlier. Now, Madam Mayor, you attended a function with me not long after you were first elected as a councillor. We went to the Community uh, Participation Program or Partnerships Program run by the State Government. State Government, uh, through the Minister Lily D'Ambrosio, put up a whole heap of uh, concepts of what they wanted us to tell them was important. And really they started at the second level of the consultation. The design of uh, our consultation on the Climate Action Plan was to start with a blank page except for what do you want the Climate Action Plan for Burundara to look like? And other than that, it makes no preconceptions. So it's just as valid, in my view, um, uh, to make it, um, uh, what would you say, to start a proper community participatory process around consultation and engagement, to start that conversation with the community, to engage as many and hopefully come to take the politics that has been referred to out of what is uh, the climate emergency, because I think it has been politicised across Australia, um, we can come to a consensus through a discussion in our community and bring back the results of that, like we did with the community plan, which, by the way, has been adopted uh, by the state government as a, a model for how you do consultation. And in that, it might have uh, that we have climate emergency plan. Do I need to hold, Madam Mayor? Uh, no, just um, okay. saying that Councillor Ross is having some difficulty and... Um, Do you want me to hold on? Um, yeah, Councillor Ross, are you all right? Um, my battery is running out. I'm just looking for the charger. Uh, all right. Um, no, she, so Councillor Ross is just looking for a charger. I believe Councillor Healy, uh, it's, it's okay to keep proceeding. Sorry, we'll resolve this. Okay, thank you. So, you know, in my view, there'd be no reason why the community consultation someone might not bring up the idea of uh, carbon neutrality and whether or not we could run some numbers on what it would take to become carbon neutral and then refer to that community consultation and say, you know, this is our budget, this is what it would cost to become carbon neutral, do you want to do it? How far do you want to go? That can all be part of a consultative process and hopefully one that comes to a consensus. I think there will be outliers in that process. There will be people who, who want maximum uh, climate and environmental action. There will be others who don't want any, and there will be a big group in the middle. Um, and perhaps finding that consensus helps council. And going through that process won't be easy, and this is where I think the leadership really is. So you have to start this process with a blank page for it to work. Trying to predict what should go in is the wrong way to start this process. Let the community tell us what they want in there and then we'll work through it with them like we did with the other plan and we will come to a very good result. I'm confident in the Burundara community and I'm confident in the councillors of the day to do what that plan asks of the community. I ask my fellow councillors to not support this notice of motion. Uh, thank you, Councillor Healy. Uh, Councillor Thompson? You indicated that you'd like to speak. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, um, yes, without doubt, obviously this has been quite political tonight and obviously the line in the sand and drawn by the division, which I sort of foreshadowed was going to be drawn. Um, but needless to say, uh, councillors, I will support this, uh, this motion that's before us because it is harmless, simply just asking our community what they think. Um, our community could turn around and say, we don't like it one little bit. And that's part of that participatory uh, conversation that we will have with them. Um, but I'm not fearful of asking the question. I think it's right to ask the question. Um, I very much look forward to the actual consultation process on the Burundara Climate Action Plan. I think we can all roll that through and really get out to work out the finer details of how we actually deal with this policy. 
And out of that will come the great things that we can be in step with that community um, because we'll all have a shared vision on this. Um, this topic will continue to keep coming up and we may as well take it as part of this climate action plan and ask the question. So I will be supporting this and even before we actually start the climate action plan consultation, I'll be asking the community myself what they feel about council preparing a climate emergency. A prudent question to ask. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Thompson. Is there anyone wishing else wishing to speak to the motion tonight? Uh, Councillor Hollingsworth, Councillor Sinfield, I saw um, Councillor Wigman after that. So Councillor Hollingsworth. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. As the second of the motion, would you like me to speak last? Uh, no, you can speak whenever you feel so moved to do so. Would you like to speak now or later? Uh, you, you can put your hand up to do it later. I'll do it later. Thank you. Uh, right, Councillor Sinfield. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, as Councillor Thompson just alluded to, he'll be asking this question of his community uh, from now on. I have been. Um, it's something that I discuss with, uh, with various constituents and members of our community from time to time. And I haven't felt compelled uh, by an overwhelming number of constituents to raise this through a notice of motion or even a discussion with my colleagues because uh, the people that I have spoken to um, don't feel that it is the place of local government to be doing this. It's been in the media, it's been spoken about over the last six months or more. Um, the process is already underway, as colleagues have already mentioned, to, uh, to consult our community and to form an action plan. Um, and I think that this uh, notice of motion number 51 is, uh, is the poor cousin of notice of motion number 50, the consolation prize. And will we get number 52 next council meeting and number 53 thereafter and keep on putting it on the table as we get closer to the election? I fear that that may be the case. Um, Officer time, I feel, is better spent on taking action on how we can improve our own environmental sustainability and I would much sooner see our officers uh, brainstorming amongst their teams on what we can do to improve, what we can do to improve projects that are shovel ready, what we can do to improve um, our, our oldest of buildings that I sit in tonight and, and things like the Hawthorne Town Hall that uh, that have um, largely been brought up to speed environmentally and have uh, various different things um, fitted to them, be they solar panels or um, water saving measures and the like. Um, I don't think that officer time should be spent consulting our community on this and preparing summaries of their responses when we have another process running in parallel. Um, so I will leave my comments there and I will not be supporting this notice of motion, which I feel is also grandstanding to uh, Thank you, Councillor Sinfield. Councillor Wigman. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> this all uh, smacks a bit, unfortunately to me, smacks a bit of uh, wedge politics here. Um, all this stuff sounds innocuous, but it really doesn't contribute anything to anything, in my opinion. Uh, leadership is about doing the right thing, not the easy thing. I think it would be easy to support the motion. Um, again, I would encourage my colleagues to follow the path that we've all agreed that we're going to move along um, and not usurp it um, for whatever purposes. Uh, it, in the end, um, we all want to end up at the same place. Let's give what we've all agreed to uh, a proper go. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Wakeman. Madam Mayor, on a point of order, if I may. Uh, yes, Councillor Healy. What's your um, point of order? The, the, I'm just curious, the order of um, speakers, I think, is the mover, then the seconder. And the seconder can't speak at any time. Um, I'll just seek some advice from Mr. Thank Thompson. Um, 
So, Councillor Healy, uh, advice from uh, Mr Thompson is that under our meeting procedure local law, it's the discretion of the chair and uh, I've chosen to exercise that discretion tonight and allow the seconder of uh, the motion and, and any motions to speak when they so desire or not speak should they so desire. Uh, Mr Thompson is uh, looking up the particular section. Um, I just will note it's uh, different to the last few meetings we had, Madam Chair, but that's okay. It's your discretion. Uh, thank you. Um, now, uh, uh, Councillor Ross. Thank you, um, Madam Mayor. I'm, I'm conscious that the seconder did want to speak and I'm not sure if anybody else has put their hand up, but I uh, would like to speak. Um, I'll, I'm in support of, uh, of this motion. Um, we are going out to the community as part of the community action plan. Um, but it, uh, what this is doing is, is actually saying a particular question which would form part of that. Um, a lot of councillors said previously that they wanted to ask the community and they want to engage with the community. So all this is just doing is saying that one of the questions that we should put to our community is would you support a climate action plan and really it is the right thing to do to make sure that this is a question which is asked of the community just to make sure it is done um, if councillors have an issue with notices of motion and the timing of notices of motion then we should look to change the timings of notice of motion the local law says when notices of motion can be submitted and if that is an issue and a problem then let's change the time and make it that the notices of motion need to be submitted earlier but at the moment it is that it's, it details in our local law when when notices of motion should be submitted but very happy to support this notice of motion because it clearly just articulates it's one of the questions that we want to put to the community just one of the many things that we want to talk to the, to the community, but just to make sure that we don't miss this. So I will be supporting this notice of motion. Uh, thank you, Councillor Ross. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak to the motion? I see no hands up. I'll, I'll just, uh, Councillor Hollingsworth, you'd like to speak now? Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you for your indulgence in allowing me to speak. Um, a couple of points that I want to touch on which I believe are very important. First of all, this issue is certainly not tokenistic and it's not election related. The election is five months away um, and I believe the reason why Council added has, has tabled this to be heard tonight is because of the urgency of the matter, because of the recent events, because we've been through a pandemic, um, because we have actually committed to our climate action plan, um, but because of catastrophic events that have happened since December, uh, in fact that were leading up even prior to December, uh, and the, the series of events that's happened, that is what's escalated bringing this forward. So it's not a notice of motion that is to grandstand, politicise or win votes. It's, it's a motion that's being put forward because it's of the belief there is a real concern and that local government do have a role in addressing it. Now, I know many other municipalities have. I don't understand why it would be appropriate for others and not for Burundara. And I don't think that representing the best interest of the community, of the community that has come and spoken to us, is doing anything that is inappropriate. Now, I've listened to all councillors' comments and I value and appreciate everything that's been said. I'm in a different situation. In the Lyndon Ward, I have a strong community that feels very, very powerful about the climate change um, and impacts of climate change. So I have spoken to numerous school groups. I have spoken to community groups, resident groups, individuals. Uh, I've been approached a lot. So I know that I am speaking from what I am hearing from my community um, and I was elected by the Lyndon Ward to put forward their voice and be a representative of matters that are important to them. So that's what I'm doing here tonight. Um, other matters, notice of motion, um, they're not uncommon, they're not frequent, um, but they're not uncommon. And by submitting the notice of motion on Friday is within the guidelines providing adequate time for councillors to review and consider the agenda item listed. Um, amended motions are not uncommon. Um, from time to time things develop within the realm of council. 
where we don't always have the luxury of giving extended um, advance notice of what is wanted to be listed to be heard. But nonetheless, every time there is a notice of motion or an amended motion, the person that is putting that forward believes there is great urgency or great importance to that. And I support Councillor Addis for her merits in doing this. Um, I also just wanted to respond to Councillor Wegman's comments. I don't believe that the intent is to usurp the um, climate action plan. I believe the intent is to just fast track it, again, based on what's happening within the environment in recent time. And finally, I just want to close on our um, council community plan. Uh, I still believe that climate action is something that was clearly flagged by, by our community back in 2016-17. And there are very um, numerous strategic points that have been listed. All of them we have acted on. Um, the final one is actually leading our community into climate action or climate action plan. We have built a community capacity to live in a sustainable and efficient and energy and water resource recovery renewal energy generation. We are reducing the amount of general waste. We are doing our best to reduce the carbon footprint. We are ticking all the boxes of what the community has asked us to do. I know Councillor Park mentioned earlier that Burundara has an excellent reputation and I agree 100%. We are very fortunate to have a, a wonderful CEO and um, highly intelligent officers that put together a process that Burundara can adopt and work and be sustainable. Our new buildings that we are working on, um, projects that are flagged to be constructed in the near future, have all been designed with a focus of being as energy efficient as possible, as clean energy efficient as possible. So we are consciously doing what, what we're setting out to do every day but we're also listening to the community at the same time and they're saying to us they would like us to do more. And I think a petition signed by close to 4,000 people is a good indication that that, that is the voice of the community. Um, I thank you for listening. I, I only just want to, in closing, make a comment that while we're a community now of approximately 180,000 people, when we look to 2027, which is what our... Um, 2017 to 2027 plan encompasses, we'll be closer to a community of 200,000. We're a community of 6,000 hectares. We're a community that is becoming more and more dense as we have growth in the area. We need to be consciously aware of what else we can do to help improve um, and prevent and mitigate the impacts of climate change. And I thank you for listening to me. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hollingsworth. Councillor Park. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have to take issue with the, some of the comments uh, uh, made by Councillor Hollingsworth. The notion that, um, to use her words, we, uh, extended advance notice couldn't be given. Well, nobody's actually asked for extended advance notice, whatever that might be. But um, Quite frankly, um, I uh, am told um, by a very reliable source that councillors Addis, Ross and Hollingsworth actually had extensive conversations about this proposed course of action last week. And I don't know if any other councillors were involved uh, or, or asked or uh, had their, their, their views sought. I know I certainly wasn't approached. And uh, I think, quite frankly, it's disingenuous when we've got a situation right down to they've figured out amongst themselves who'll second which motion to then suggest that uh, this isn't about grandstanding. And Madam Mayor, I have to say that my understanding, and I thought I had a reasonable grasp of the English language, perhaps not, but uh, my understanding of the word emergency and what's constituted by that is very different, apparently, to the understanding that some of my colleagues have. Because quite frankly, how can something be an emergency if you wait more than seven and a half years after your election to raise this? Although perhaps I'm looking at from the wrong end. Perhaps the emergency is that the election's fast closing. I don't know. But either way, 
uh, this is a political stunt, and I particularly endorse the comments made by uh, Councillor Hurd and by Councillor Wegman. And uh, I certainly will not be supporting this motion. Uh, thank you, Councillor Park. Uh, before I return to the, mo the mover, Councillor Addis, I would like to uh, speak to the motion. Um, the first part of the motion, uh, I believe, is completely redundant. Uh, we passed motion 49, notice of motion 49. I was the mover of that motion concerning the climate action plan. Um, it was very detailed in terms of uh, what we hope to achieve and uh, clearly set out to our community that uh, we wanted to have a discussion. And uh, so uh, therefore, um, I, I don't know why we are putting forward a motion that uh, really has been covered off in a previous motion. So um, section one, I believe, is redundant. Uh, section two, um, I'm quite uncomfortable with uh, the directing of officers uh, when it comes to um, creating a conversation with the community. Uh, I uh, follow um, uh, the thinking of Councillor Healy in this respect. I believe we start with a clean sheet and with transparency. Uh, the officers um, uh, apply um, apply their minds to this based on um, uh, their dealings with the community and also uh, the research available. Um, to, for councillors to start directing uh, and telling officers what can and can't be put in surveys, I think um, uh, creates it can lead to a creation of of a certain bias because as um, Councillor Hurd pointed out, in the law it's called a leading question and I believe that if we go and, and starting to say we're going to have a discussion with our community and this is what we want discussed, it's not a full and frank conversation uh, that it needs to have where we suspend our biases, uh, we look at for the best officer advice and uh, oh, we just um, got some te technical difficulties with Councillor Radis. I think they're being resolved. Yeah, so, so when we when we approach the Burundara community plan, uh, while I wasn't on council, I rely on the on the institutional knowledge of councillors from the previous uh, council. But it is my understanding that uh, that went forward uh, in a way that was. Uh, not uh, micromanaged by councillors to say, I want you to ask X and I want you to ask Y. So I trust that the officers will come up with a way of consulting with our community uh, that will lead them, that will enable them to frankly share their views with us. And as expressed by other councillors, I trust the wisdom of the Burundara community. I have every intention of listening and actioning uh, what it is that they tell and direct us to do. Uh, I believe that that really does encapsulate the role of local councillors to listen to their community. And the form of listening is very, very important. And I think that councils directing that form uh, taints and skews it. And so therefore, I feel intensely uncomfortable with supporting the second part of the motion. So therefore, I will not be supporting the motion tonight. I'd like to now return to uh, Councillor Addis as the mover of the motion. Um, thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, it puzzles me why people are finding what seems to me a very simple consultation process, why they're characterising it as so complex. When we go out to consult with our community, we typically ask them a number of questions to help clarify their, their, their thoughts. So that's the, the quantitative aspect of a survey. We then typically throw it open and ask for more qualitative comments. So two questions in amongst a range of um, quantitative questions seems to me perfectly reasonable and doesn't need to be characterised as, as leading people. Um, and it, 
I fail to see how that puts a burden on our officers. It seems to me a very little thing to ask. Um, I wanted to address a couple of things. Um, the 2013 Act actually provides the following definition of emergency. And what, it, amongst other things, it means it states that it, um, an emergency is due to the actual or imminent occurrence of an event which in any way endangers or threatens to endanger the safety of, or health of any person in Victoria or which destroys or damages or threatens to destroy or damage any property in Victoria or endangers or threatens to endanger the environment or an element of the environment in Victoria. So I think those words can explain and can legitimise um, that this is an emergency. It seems to fit with the definition and it certainly seems to fit in with the communities of our understanding of what an emergency is. I think it's really quite offensive of some of my colleagues to characterise the motivations I and um, a couple of other people have had in taking this action. They can speak for their own motivations, but they have absolutely no right and no knowledge of what my motivations are. And I would ask them to exercise appropriate behaviour. They can talk about what their motivations are, but they have absolutely no right to talk about what my motivations are. Only I know them. And again, why would I expect my colleagues not to support this? The, the, community, the community's views that I've heard would clearly support it. And likewise, why would I expect my colleagues to be so different from councillors in surrounding municipalities who had apparently no, no difficulty with with these sorts of actions about declaring climate emergencies and, and asking their community what they think. And uh, just um, in closing, um, it was mentioned that leadership is about doing the right thing, not the easy thing. Well, clearly for me, this isn't an easy thing. This is about doing the right thing. And essentially, it is about seeking our community's views. And that, for me and a number of my colleagues, is the right thing. Thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Addis. I'll now put that motion to the vote. All those for? Uh, Councillor Ross, Councillor Addis, Councillor Thompson and Councillor Hollingsworth. Uh, all those against? Uh, Councillor Park, Councillor Sinfield, Councillor Wegman, Councillor Hurd, Councillor Healy, and myself, Councillor Watson, I declare the motion failed. Uh, moving on now to item seven on the agenda which is the um, presentation of officers' reports. So item 7.1 is the March 2020 quarterly performance report and I believe we'll have to have a presentation from uh, Mr Greg Hall. Through you Madam Chair. The quarterly performance report for March 2020 provides detailed reporting on the financial and non-financial performance against both the budget and the council plan for the year. As per the Local Government Act, council provides a quarterly report on the performance of council. The March QPR includes the period of time primarily before the occurrence of the COVID-19 outbreak and hence does not reflect any of the associated impacts. However, as at March 31, annual commitments were on track with a 16% already completed at that date. Council's operating result was ahead of budget due to a 1% above budget revenue result and a 2% below budget expenditure result. On the balance sheet, 
Council's financial position and liquidity are strong. The officer's recommendation is to receive and note the quarterly performance report for March 2020. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Hall. Uh, Councillor, is there any questions for uh, Mr Hall this evening? Uh, there being none, then I'm in search for motion, Councillor Park. Uh, thank you very much for that. Is there a seconder? Uh, Councillor Healy. Uh, Councillor Park, would you like to speak to the motion this evening? Uh, I think it speaks for itself, uh, Mayor. I'll, I'll... Sorry, Councillor Park. Uh, I say I think it speaks for itself, so I have nothing further to add. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone in uh, opposition to the motion tonight? My apologies for not asking sooner. Uh, there being none, uh, Councillor Park, you said it speaks to it for itself, so therefore, uh, with your indulgence, I'll put that motion to the vote. All those in favour? I declare the motion carried. So, councillors, uh, we've now come to the next item, which is uh, item 7.2, the council's membership of the Victorian Local Governance Association. And uh, as indicated pre previously, um, I need to declare a conflict of interest uh, because I have a direct interest in the matter in accordance with section 77B of the Local Government Act. Uh, in item 7.2, which is uh, the item tonight, uh, I am a board member of the VLGA and have a direct connection with the matter. That is, if the matter is decided in any particular way, I am reasonably likely to be directly affected and my circumstances directly altered. So I will now temporarily vacate the chair. Councillors, because the Mayor has temporarily vacated the Chair because of conflict of interest, we need to elect a temporary chairperson. I therefore call for nominations for the position of temporary chairperson. Councillor Hollingsworth. Uh, thank you, Mr Thompson. I nominate Councillor Addis as the prior Mayor and Chair. Is there a seconder? Councillor Healy. Are there any further nominations? There being no further nominations, I declare Councillor Addis elected as temporary chairperson. Councillor Addis, would you please assume the chair? If you just bear with us a minute, councillors, Councillor Addis is making a way to the chair. Thank you very much, colleagues. I'm sorry about the delay. We had to do a, a quick disinfect of the uh, headphones <laughs> given the current pandemic situation. So, um, okay, we're right now. Thank you. Um, so look, thank you everyone. I'll now pass over to um, Mr. David Thompson. Hansel, uh, so Hansel Addis, we can't see you. Oh. Are we right now? Thank you. You can hear me. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so um, I'll um, now pass over to um, Mr. David Thompson, Manager of Governance, to present on the VLGA membership. Thank you. 
Thank you, Councillor Addis. Councillors, before you tonight is a report for your consideration as to whether or not Council should renew its membership of the Victorian Local Governance Association. Council has received a request to renew its VLGA membership for 2020-21 at a cost of $37,760 excluding GST. The VLGA has not increased membership fees for the 2020-21 period. There are 79 councils in Victoria. 46 councils are members of the VLGA, including 25 of 31 metropolitan councils. The council men of benefits of the VLGA membership are set out at appendix two, pages 12 and 13 of your business papers. An increasing organisational focus on the Municipal Association of Victoria as the poor repeat body and advocate representing the interests of the sector is reflected in a continued trend towards minimal officer participation in the VLG activities. Officers are of the view that council needs for representation, advocacy and support can be met by the Municipal Association of Victoria and therefore the direct benefits of VLGA membership are not sufficient on their own to justify the ongoing membership subscription fees. Officers are therefore recommending to council not to renew membership of the VLGA. Thank you, Madam Chair, Acting Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Um, councillors, are there any questions for officers? Um, Councillor Heard, do you have your hand up? Yes, thank you, Councillor Addis. I don't have a question, I have a motion um, when ready. Thank you, Councillor Heard. Um, are there any other questions from councillors? I can't see any others, no hands up. So, Councillor Heard, would you like to put your motion? Thank you, Councillor Addis. I'd like to move the officer's recommendation as printed, please. Thank you. And I see Councillor Park's hand up. I think he was the next. Are you seconding, Councillor Park? Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, just to assist um, Councillor Heard and Councillor Parker, uh, is there anyone who's opposed to the motion? Um, Councillor Ross, you're opposed? Thank you. Um, so, uh, Councillor Heard, as the mover, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, Councillor Addis, I would. Um, I didn't hear the beep saying I'm unmuted, so I'm presuming people can hear me. Um, look, I've always been half and half about VLGA, but my concern is is many. Um, some of the things that, that the reason the organisation was originally set up, some of the things in the officers' reports, some of the material that's coming out of them at the moment, I think it should be an individual decision about whether a council wants to be a member. Um, I received, like many did, an email last week telling me to tap on the shoulder any women for councillors. I, I don't tap people on the the shoulders to become a councillor, women, men or, or people from Mars because I don't undermine my colleagues. Um, I, I think their diversity policy is, is basically a lot like um, other areas of, gov of local government in the MAV, very gender focused, it's not diversity focused around people with disabilities. It's got so bad that when the minister announced the local government elections he said, we want to encourage diversity, like women and carers. Well, carers are people like Leanne, who's very helpful for me, who empowers a person with a disability like me to be on council. Um, and and there are more people in the world than women. And, and I think that I'm concerned that, that I used to be very supportive of the VLGA, but I'm, I'm concerned that, that their agenda has become very narrow and it doesn't really reflect my aspirations as a as a, as a councillor. So for that and the officer's reasons, I'm supporting this motion. Um, thank you, Councillor Heard. Councillor Park is the seconder. Would you like to speak now? Yes, thank you. I'll be brief. Um, I, uh, I've actually spoken against renewing um, council's membership of the VLGA in the past, and I maintain that position. Um, my view is that uh, being members of one peak body is more than enough and uh, of course uh, at significant expense we are members of the MAV. Uh, I don't believe that we need to duplicate that expense um, by continuing membership of VLGA which um, in my view uh, in the time that I've served as a councillor in the last uh, seven and a half years 
has um, increasingly lost its focus and lost its way. Um, and uh, in my view, um, the time uh, is right to part ways with that organisation. I don't know what its uh, future holds. I think uh, I think that there'll be many councils uh, uh, considering that very same action, and certainly um, in terms of value for money, uh, there is little or none. So I'd encourage my colleagues to support the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Park. Councillor Ross, you presumably would like to speak. I, I, I will be brief as. Um... As you know that I'm the president of the MOV, so I do find that rather difficult then to say that we should um, cease to be members of a, 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 a another peak body within local like, government. I mean, the, the, the VLGA has a very rich history in um, in its support of uh, in social justice, and um, certainly that is an area which it has continued to um, um, to advocate very strongly. So, uh, and they're very strong on the, on their campaigns uh, for uh, regarding gambling or, or anti-gambling. So, um, I, I would uh, I'd be happy for us to continue with our membership of the VLGA. Um, thank you, thank you, Councillor Ross. Would it, um, Councillor Healy, you'd like to speak? Yes, um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I read the officer's report, I concur with the officer's report, but I went and spoke to uh, one or more board members who also concur with our <laughs> officer's report. So I think um, uh, the time is now to withdraw. The uh, VLGA focuses on things that I think are well outside uh, the benefit of the people of Burundara. And so you look at the return on investment and um, this is uh, something that we're not getting any uh, tangible return on. And uh, I think the officers have made the right call and uh, happy to support the motion. Um, thank, thank you, um, Councillor Healy. Now, I can't see any other hands up with people wanting to speak, so I'll hand back to the mover, Councillor Herb, to wrap up. Right. Hello. Okay. Um, sorry. I uh, thank you. I I won't add any more to it. I think what has been said has been said. So thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much. So I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Okay. So we've got Councillor Wakeman. Um, we have Councillor Sinfield. Um, Councillor Park. Um, Councillor Hollingsworth, um, Councillor Hurd, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Healy, and uh, me, Councillor Addis, and um, those against, um, Councillor Ross. Thank you. So I'll declare that motion carried. Thank you, Councillors. Councillors and members of the community, Councillor Addis will now vacate the chair and we will bring Councillor Watson, the Mayor, back to resume the chairing of the meeting. Just bear with us one moment, please. Um, thank you, thank you, Councillor Addis, for um, conducting that section of the business. Um, item eight, councillors, 
is uh, general business. Are there any items of general business this evening? There being no items of general business, are there any items of urgent business? Uh, there being uh, no items of urgent business, we'll now proceed to item 10. And we do have an item of confidential business uh, this evening. And uh, because this is a, an, a, an item of confidential business con uh, concerning the appointment to an audit committee, could I please have a motion to close the council meeting to the public in accordance with section 662A uh, and the definition of confidential information, section three of the Local Government Act, to consider item 10.1, which is the appointment to the audit committee. Because it is personal information and the disclosure of which would result in unreasonable disclosure of information about the audit committee members' personal affairs being appointment to and continued involvement with the audit committee. Uh, Councillor Raddis, you prepared to move that motion. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Thompson, you prepared to second that motion. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any opposition to this motion this evening? Uh, there being none, then I declare the motion carried. And the council meeting is now closed to the public. So for those members of the community who have been watching tonight's proceedings, we are now going to take you offline. And uh, I thank you for participating in and viewing the meeting so far. And when we have determined this matter, we will bring you back online. But for now, um, it's, uh, we will uh, shut it down. So it's goodbye for now. Right. Uh, so we just, uh, I'm just waiting for uh, the go ahead here. All right, uh, all good. Um, thank you, um, uh, members of the community who've been watching tonight's proceedings, and welcome back to the council meeting. Uh, and we've uh, now arrived at the conclusion, and uh, there is uh, no further business to be transacted, so I declare the council meeting closed. Thank you very much for all of those who participated and watched uh, this evening and to the councillors who contributed to quite a, a vigorous debate this evening. So thank you very much and good night.